cultural nationalism for the very reason that you're talking about, because I think that in, in your work, Dr. Kariga, um, this emphasis on the unity, and, and in fact, uh, I believe that uh, Kawaii um, talks about unity even in the midst of diversity. If, if I can be honest. Mm -hmm. So we can clearly see the ways that would be theoretically connected to Cabral, but I also think that your ability to capture complex uh, philosophies, whole bodies of discursive domains, and sometimes yes. in phrases, yes. um, is something that really, I think, helps to popularize something that, now, I, I think that, of course, you've schooled me that don't just stop with unity and diversity, study what I mean by that, go deeper on it, and so I think that that would also be something that Kyle Reader does, this emphasis on study, uh, so study and struggle, I would say. If, if I could just... Yes, sir, I'm going to say something. I wanted, I wanted, and I wanted to get your response first. Yes, sir. Because I mean, through your lectures, I mean, I see direct quotes from Kawhi and also fair praise. Yes, sir. So what I, what I wanted to do is, and I was glad you said because the hub and head on which the whole conversation around Kawhi is, is what is cultural nationalism. Yes, sir. So I just want to give you the definition of cultural nationalism. You I tell me yes, whether or not it fits with yes, Kawhi. Yes, cultural nationalism is thought and practice organized around three fundamental propositions. One, that the defining feature of any people or nation is its culture. Mm -hmm. Second, that for people to be itself and free itself, mm -hmm. it must be self-determined, right. pardon me, must be self-conscious, self-determining, and rooted in its own culture. Mm -hmm. And third, that the quality of life of a people and the success of its liberation struggle mm -hmm. depends upon its waging cultural revolution mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. and political revolution without resulting in a radical transformation of self, society, and ultimately the world. Now what people get thrown off by is we put emphasis on self as well as society, right? right? right. But when you were talking about decolonizing the person, mm -hmm. both Fanon, uh, all three, people have an uh, exhausted, I have an article I shared with you, please, on comparing Kawaita with Sekou Ture, Fanon, and Cabral's concept of culture. Because what happens here is that if you don't deal with how people are, mm -hmm. and you were just talking about mm -hmm. the betrayal, yeah. mm -hmm. Cabral was talking about committing class suicide. You've got to deal with that. If you don't deal with that, you can't wage a successful revolutionary struggle. So the class suicide means completely identifying with the aspirations of the masses and giving your wealth, your power, and your knowledge to the service of the liberation struggle. Tradition and reason. You were talking about narrow notions of culture. Well, we say all of our culture is based on two things, tradition mm -hmm. and reason. Tradition is our foundation. But reason brings up to current needs and to our best moral thinking. So, hey, this is Cabral, this is Benoni, this is Sekou Ture. So what is wrong? All of it is revolution. Our thing is national liberation, too. At the heart of it is national liberation. Without that, what can we do? Okay, so I, I just wanted you to see that. I wanted you to say that if you felt that, yes. that it was so. Yes, definitely. And uh, like I said, you don't want to introduce me to Cabral, so let me just say that again now. And again, like, like I said, I mean, I, again, I, I think that uh, I, I, this is really important, and I, I believe that based on what you just said, so when we're saying black liberation, that could be our way of saying national liberation mm -hmm. within this context. But Cabral would call That's it national it liberation, right? Because you're not going right. to right. So there are those parallels. Yes, sir. And yes, the oh, nation is right. just another word for national there community. Right. right. People with a common history, common culture, common life chance, and, and a common self-understanding yes. that is developed over a period of historical time. So that's why we say national. We're national because we see it as a nation. A lot of times people say revolutionary national. They never define nationalism or right. revolutionary. Mm -hmm. right? Right. Right. We're revolutionary. We're culture national. We're national. And we're, well, whatever else is in there. <laughs> OK? I just need to have that. Yes. Can I just say that what you said? Uh, this is this is the issue, and I'm glad y'all are here because I want you to challenge me. But the Marxists and the other people, the feminists, all these other people, they run away from a conversation with me. If I don't know what I'm talking about, if I'm weak, expose me. Bring me to a place where you got somebody you feel can actually demonstrate the weakness of our argument. You can't you can't just claim things in front. You can't just shout slogans. You've got to in fact. 
And one of the things it does, and this is what bothers me, I think, in a very way, is it keeps people from admitting that they have learned from the Kawaiina, mm -hmm. and that they quote Kawaiina without even directly referring to it, mm -hmm. because people will attack them for it. Mm -hmm. And so we think that if y'all, if, if Cabral is right, and we talk about this in CBS, if we're going to have integrity as scholars, mm -hmm. yes. then we can't keep doing this. Right. We can't keep talking to me in the side, like 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 you are. <laughs> <laughs> If you, if you believe that what I'm saying is correct, if you believe that right. I've done significant work, yes, then it's dishonest not to say it. Mm -hmm. It's just like, for example, we suffered the COINTEL pro. Mm -hmm. I'm in captivity on Trump Jeff charge. Nobody even discusses it. They don't discuss us as victims of the COINTEL pro. In fact, they don't discuss the nation, which was the first victim with Malcolm, right? Mm -hmm. And the largest and strongest black organization in the black power movement. They don't discuss RNA or RAM or mm -hmm. SCLC. All these groups suffered that. And we certainly got people still un underground and in exile, right? And we're able to, and, and some have in captivity. But we're able to go on. What happens to the other people? So somebody needs to discuss that besides somebody like the other guy that wrote a book that's nothing but an appendix to the FBI report, mm -hmm. the book that's supposed to be on us. I need not mention names. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll, take one more, I'll take one more question, and I'm going to take okay. it from the So yesterday, and you were talking about uh, this whole notion of cabal settlements. And then yesterday, there was this comment about NCBS uh, giving some lack of better language uh, certification to programs, African American Studies programs, to put the rubber stamp on. And so, what do you think about that idea? I think that was posed to you yesterday, Dr. Carita. And in my own thinking of that, if we were to do something like that, correct me if I'm wrong, because I know we pay to all these other white institutions. I'm in social work, and I pay to several of them. But I hate it to be a money making apparatus, but I do want to see that take come about as a way of kind of closing ranks about yes. who's mm -hmm. doing this stuff and who's not yes. doing this stuff. What do you think about that? I think I'm sorry, I'm sorry. you're welcome to just keep your comments brief, just to be respectful of the plenary. Okay. Do you sit? You have to sit. Not sure. Sure. <laughs> you have to go. I can talk to you further about it, but I think it has a lot to do with you. For, for that kind of accreditation thing that, that was discussed a lot in the 70s yeah. when NCBS was founded and we were meeting, uh, the organization was meeting, I wasn't there, but was meeting in Princeton with the ETS, the Educational Testing Services, and was trying to actually develop a kind of official accrediting formula. You know, that moment has passed. I don't think we're going to really be able to kind of recapture that. It would take enormous buy-in by a lot of high-level college presidents, by a lot of uh, accrediting bodies to really say, yes, they've got it. But we can do good program for yeah, each other. Yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah. There's another way of doing that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks.